What is going on guys? This is Echo with Eclipsed Oasis and on today's video I'm going to show you guys a base design that I came up with that I think would be perfect for small groups or maybe even solo or duo players. So the point of this base design is to be functional yet annoying to those who want to raid you and obviously you have to always keep in the back of your head that if someone is going to raid you and they want to raid you they are going to raid you. So no base is unraidable. Do not ever let a YouTube video tell you that a base is unraidable because there are people that will literally waste hours and hours and hours of time to raid your base down to the ground if they really want to. But you can make a base annoying to raid and make it cost, you know, a lot more resources than what they would expect or a lot more time than they would want to put in. So hopefully they either run out of resources or they get tired of raiding your base and give up or maybe you only get one or two chests and not the rest. So let's jump into it. So the basic premise of the base is a 2x2 two two with honeycomb. And so you want to start off, if I can even remember how to build that would be fantastic. So start off with a 2x2 two two foundations. And I typically always build my bases always in like the same order in terms of like everything facing the same direction. Because if not, it just, I don't know, like I'm really OCD and it is just annoying so this will be like your work quarters pretty much like this will all be stuff that you use and then you want to build your honeycombs off to the side so essentially you're gonna have more walls they have to get through to get to your things and so this is what i'm talking about whenever i say always build your things in the same direction so you see that little piece of wood right there that is sticking outwards it gives you the option to do it in or out so always just build everything in like the most symmetrical way i don't know why but it just in my opinion helps with like the clicking like the, whenever you can like rotate stuff because if things are like opposite of each other like say this one was facing in and this one's facing out it might give you different options on what you can and can't rotate and that's all i really mean by that so i'm going to finish this first um the first layer and i'll cut back and i'll give you guys a walkthrough of what i did all right, so I'm going to pause right here, even though I don't have the first layer done on these outer parts of the foundation, but this is a very critical building point. So it doesn't matter where you put your door. You can have your door right here with your um, airlock, or you can have it right here or right there. Honestly, it really doesn't matter. Just pick which side, and it doesn't matter if like you invert the base or whatever. It'll work the same. So get all of the simple like walls down like this. And then I have your door where you can walk inside. Don't put any roofs on or anything like that yet. And then what you want to do is because you're going to be adding honeycomb in between these walls right here. But before you can do that, you're going to have to wall them off. And I'll show you what I mean by that in just one second. So I'm going to put these outer walls on like this. Before you put these walls on is what I'm talking about. So I'm going to add all these really quick. And as you can see, I'm making that little board hang out instead of in. A little bit of lag all right so right here is the end and now what you're going to want to do is get to your roofs so find the roofs where are they at I'm blind okay here we go so get toward the roofs are going on the snap point and then you rotate them all the way down as far as you can so go toward the red and then go one up and that's where you want to click and the reason you have to put these walls first is because, yeah, you can put these down first, like the slanted wall, uh, roofs, but it will not allow you to place the wall after you've done this. So you have to build all of this in a certain order for this to work. So I'm going to go ahead and add these slanted walls to all four sides, except for the door, obviously, because you have to have a way to get in. And then I'll cut right back. All right, so now we have the basic slants done in between our walls and our honeycomb. And what this is doing is essentially adding another layer of honeycomb that is going to have to be raided before they can get to the core of your base, which is really nice. So as you can see, there's a wall which leads into your base. There's this slant which they're going to have to raid through to get into that wall to get into your base. And then you're going to add an additional wall on the outside. So essentially it's three walls to get into your base from any direction except for the door. But then I'll show you why the door is strong here in one moment. All right, now at this point we have the outer walls done um, to almost completely box up our honeycomb portion of our base. 
So let's go ahead and add the roofs to all parts of the outer perimeter. Do not add the wall or the uh, roofs to the inner square yet. We're not done designing the interior. But we can go ahead and box up the outer honeycomb. All right, now that you've added your ceilings onto your base, and like I said, always make sure that they're all going the same direction. So my doorway is this direction. So I like to have all my, my roofs and everything going the same direction as my door. And that way it just helps with how good your base looks, as well as the weird clicking of like um, pieces to each other and stuff like that. Because if you have a bunch of stuff going like, say this roof was facing that direction and this one was facing this direction, it might have different snap mechanics whenever you try to put more honeycomb on top or anything like that. So now for this next part, um, I'm not actually going to build the stuff inside, but I will tell you what can fit because this is how I have my base on officials. So you can actually fit six large chests into this base. And of course you want to do the shelf trick to where you're going to want to put a large chest right here on the ground, a large chest right here, and another right here. And you want to place them as close to this line as you can without going onto this tile, without going onto this foundation. So you'll have three wide right here. And then you're going to want to build um, two more roofs on top, just like this. And then you'll obviously tilt them down to where they're right above the chest and you'll have to get the right angle so i'm assuming it'll look like that so what this will do is you'll have your three chests on the bottom and then you'll build three more chests right above those large chests and if you don't know how to do um like the stacking of chests and stuff like that there's a, another youtube video online for that i just don't have the materials to make any large chest on me or i would show you but it's essentially this is how you do it and you would put three more chests on top for a total of six and then they'd all be clumped up on this one side right here and you would have access to all of it and then what i typically build in mine is right here in this corner i'll have an advanced fiber working station and then right here i would have a um the woodworking station and then i would have like maybe another small chest right here in this corner and then a campfire and for a solo or a duo player, there's really not much more you need than that for the interior. And it's it's very compact and very annoying to raid. Um, so you want to get all this in. Well, at least the shelving. You have to at least get the shelving done before you put the roof or it will not work. So make sure you get your chest in here and your shelves. And then uh, you can continue on with the rest of the build. So now I'm going to go ahead and finish the roof. And I'll cut back whenever we get to that point. All right, and this is where the build gets interesting right here. So you might be thinking to yourself, wow, this is only a one block raid if you get through the roof. And all you have to do to fix that is this little trick where you can stack um, roofs or any other building material when you rotate it. So go ahead and act, go as if you're trying to build a roof and then you wanna get it to where it's going straight like that and then rotate it up until it goes green. And then go ahead and place that down. And as you can see, there's no way of getting through this crack, even if you broke that other one, you would have to break this one and the other roof to get through. And so you just want to repeat this process going um, the same direction each time. And I'll show you what that looks like when you're done. Alright, so when you're complete, it should look something like this. And as you can see, it creates like this really cool little uh, texture or pattern here. And what this is doing is essentially adding another layer of honeycomb that is going to have to be raided before they can get to your roof. But another thing I do on top of this is add an additional um, barrier of walls. Alright, this is the last jump cut, I swear. Well, at least I think. <laughs> so this is what it should look like from the outside when you're completely done. And of course, this is meant to be held like on a dinghy. This is like a perfect size base for dinghy. Um, I designed it for my dinghy, in fact, because that's all I use. Um, you could always add on to it and make it even more cancer with more honeycomb and things like that. Um, this is just, you know, it's it's meant to be just an annoying base to raid as a as a clan. You know, if you're a solo player, this is a great build. Let me just put it that way. I've never, like, I've never been full looted at all, ever. Like, it takes so much time to raid this thing but if you were to raid this obviously the first thing they're going to go for is the door because that is the most you know effective way to raid anything is always through the door for the most part but the cool thing about this build is whenever you raid the door yeah sure you're going to have access to all this right here right 
but all your chests are right here. You're gonna have six chests on this left side. So even if they were to raid you through your door, they're gonna go in and smack all your workstations, but then you're gonna have six large chests right here that they're not gonna be able to reach. Even from this angle, they might be able to reach like one or two out of all your chests. And so that means like even their claw isn't gonna be able to fit in here from the angle that it would cost to break these walls and stuff like that. Which means if they wanted to get all of your loot, they would have to bust down these walls too, but then they would have already wasted fire arrows going through your front door. So then they would have to waste more going through the back and they would have to go through three layers to get to the rest of your loot. So in my opinion, that's why this is such a great build as a solo or duo or just a small group in general. It's a really cost effective base and it's pretty secure. So that's why I think this is a really good base design in my opinion. And I came up with this build just because that's just what I enjoy doing. I like coming up with little compact builds as opposed to giant huge builds. I don't know why, I've always liked that kind of thing. Um, yeah, and if you're wondering, I built this on my 10x server. We at Eclipse Oasis have a, a bunch of servers hosted for you guys so everybody can enjoy uh, the game and their own playstyle. So this uh, material was so graciously loaned to me from the guys who own the server right now. And uh, Eclipse Oasis, we are currently the number one community server. So if you are interested in playing the game or learning and you're new to the game, maybe you want to go play our PvE server and hang out with those guys. Or if you want to get some constant action, come on this server and go kill some people. Or you can do what I'm doing and practice base builds and stuff like that. So we'd love to have you. And like I said at the beginning of the video, this is Echo with Eclipsed Oasis, and I hope you enjoy the video, learn something, and if you liked it, maybe you can leave a like on the video and subscribe for more. Appreciate it, guys.